Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for another YouTube video. All in crypto here. And today we are going to be talking about Algorand. You guys will know that we are a big fan of the Algorand blockchain. We think it is one of the most capable um, and well positioned blockchains that there are in terms of this revolution um, that is going on, which is the crypto revolution spawned by Bitcoin. And now it's evolved from far more than just a peer to peer sort of thing into a um, new global financial operating system and everything in between identities etc cetera, etc cetera, which we're going to be covering this video in relation to Algorand um, but there's been some a massive announcements from Algorand we covered the last announcement that had um, everything to do with Algo's toolkit it was announced by John Wood who we've interviewed on the channel a couple of times John Wood great guy um, we followed him from Cardano over to Algorand um, and he said the announcement essentially was that they're going to enable Python pure Python scripts um, for developers on Algorand. Now this is huge. Python is by far the largest, has the largest pool of developers. Development is something that Algorand is really suffering with. Um, and I do feel like that is a very fair comment to make. You know, Algorand makes up a portion of our portfolio, not the biggest portion, um, but it is still one of the cryptos that we think uh, is gonna have a bright future ahead of it. And it's been a painful um, year. We've only really held crypto for the, for the start of the year, obviously getting out very early in the bear market. Um, but Algorand's been our worst, really one of our worst performers. And I think there's a number of things that I just want to touch on before we dive into today's update, um, which is going to incorporate um, the likes of Microsoft, Google, and Visa in association with Algorand. And then we're going to be looking at a Federal Reserve paper that actually mentions one of the DeFi applications on Algorand by name. And it is indeed lofty. So let me just go back and start with what I think Algorand is suffering with from a price point of view. Right now, there's very little interest in the crypto space, period. Uh, you can get that from Google searches. You can get that from a number of other metrics. Um, On-chain volume, um, you can get that from exchange volumes and everything in between, historic volatility. Um, and the problem that you've got is you still have, and we're going to put it like this, from associated entities, not singling any out, Algorand being dumped, sold to fund things, et cetera, et cetera. And there's just not the buyers there for it. So it's really bleeding off. And of course, you have the involvement of the SEC in regards to Algorand. Uh, very interesting that Gary Gensler, who will be very familiar with Silvio. Silvio is a touring award winner, genius of a man, came up with zero knowledge proofs and a number of other things. Although that debate is, you know, you've got people like Hal Finney that are or were um, in the kind of race for that or expanding on, on, on zero knowledge proof. But anyway, it's very interesting that um, Gary Gensler goes after projects like XRP and Algorand that are... In, already in bed with institutions, already um, looking to comply with regulations um, and a number of other things. And I kind of feel like there's a bit of a stalling um, by Gensler in regards to this industry to get it regulated. Once regulations come about, guys, it is full send. All, everything we've been looking at, all major institutions, financial institutions and everything in between, accounting firms, whatever it may be, they're all looking to interview, um, integrate DLT, distribute ledger technology, whether it be a DAG or a blockchain. And the only thing preventing them from coming out publicly and saying that, and we've got proof of this, is regulations. Um, so uh, there is, we already assess that the revival is here for crypto. We see a good year ahead of it. Okay, we know Bitcoin's having a bit of a shit time at the moment. Um, we ultimately have higher targets for Bitcoin. We think this is good progression since we sort of got in the market. Again, with the likes of Algorand, it's been a, 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 a let's just say a painful <laughs> journey thus far um, and, and you know we're very honest we don't a lot of our altcoins are doing so actually we had one altcoin that was actually up 50 percent overnight uh, you can join the patreon to find out what that is um, but we do have other altcoins that are like algorand uh, not doing um, as well but we're very hopeful for the future so we covered the python announcement which is a big deal um, I now want to jump into the algorand foundation has joined the open wallet FDN, an open source project advancing digital identities, access and payments across industries. We're excited to be joined by Microsoft, Google, Visa and more to accelerate innovation and standards for digital wallets and payments. We're going to listen to the clip in a second. Our principal architecture, um, B. Martins, shares that the foundation is thrilled to support the development and scaling of enterprise level Web3 applications in a diverse ecosystem. We recognize the ongoing significance of defining, contributing and adopting interoperability standards. I think Chainlink, we're gonna do a video on that, is, is, is killing it in regards to interoperability. Uh, we continue to evolve our focus on wallets, recent investments in uh, Pera Algo Wallet and Defliap, 
ensures Algorand's robust and diverse infrastructure by joining Open Wallet, so on and so forth. Uh, most blockchains, I'm not just going to single Algorand out here, but it is an issue with Algorand. They have very bad UIs for users. It's not user friendly um, at all. It might be user friendly for somebody like me who is a complete geek and has no life and, and spent a lot of time looking at all this sort of stuff. Um, but for your everyday typical person using Algorand and other blockchains, and we're going to say this to the detriment of some people listening, it's not user friendly. It's not development friendly unless you know what you're doing. However, they've kind of solved that problem perhaps with this. And of course, it, it, it's an ongoing thing, you know, the, 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 the creases that are getting ironed out. So I want to play this clip and then we're going to dive into the federal board um, uh, article that we actually covered over here at allincrypto.com. Guys, please do support allincrypto.com. We are one of the only major media outlets that actually cover um, you know, smaller projects like Algorand, we, we covered and we we're one of the only people to cover the Python development, et cetera, et cetera. And then we'll dive into Lofty a little bit, uh, look at it from a, perhaps a price point of view and everything in between. So what I want to do, guys, is go over to the clip, play the clip of the announcement in regards to Google and things like that. Um, and then we're going to move on swiftly. Two new members. I know Gab already, you know, hinted at that in his, uh, in his opening note. But um, firstly, it's Algorand. That's a blockchain, blockchain for good. And again, I think there's a lot of interesting use cases and new capabilities coming coming with them as well. And uh, and Microsoft, uh, which I'm really excited about. And I think we're going to hear a lot more from Microsoft as well in future future discussions. Their immediate interest is in going to solve the security challenges across the wallets and across issues and verifiers. One of the really key and fundamental problems. So very much looking forward to hearing hearing more about this. This is kind of hot off the press, I think, from this morning. Um, so there's much more to come. Two new Very interesting. They didn't give away too much. And I think generally the Algorand Foundation will have, I don't know this for a fact, a lot of partnerships that just aren't being publicly spoken about. You know, you have M M MDAs, you have, um, you know, uh, I'm quite versed in this game, things that have to be signed that you don't come out and say things, certainly with such an uncertain regulatory environment that we have right now. So let's move on to the Fed paper. Um, again, we did a full write-up on this paper. Please do come out and check allencrypto.com. We'll leave links to this in the description. We really highlight the kind of um, main points of this paper here by the Federal Reserve. We also link it in the description if you want to go and find it. Um, but it was it, it, it's fascinating because every, it, it's totally my belief that every single thing is going to be digitalized. Um, and there's no doubt about that, right? And, and it's not because it's a gimmick or it's a fad or anything like that. It's because it revolutionizes the entire financial industry. Um, it also brings on board trillions that, uh, and it incorporates them in the financial world, trillions that, you know, currently haven't been um, able to get on through uh, a number of barriers and tokenization breaks down a lot of those barriers. But if we go over to their paper, details of some tokenization projects, they list a number like JP Morgan's Onks platform. Um, they list the like of Obligate, Franklin Temple's tokenized money, um, o Ondo Finance, Realty, uh, Matrix Docs, and then of course you've got here Lofty, um, which is an Algorand built DeFi project, second largest Algorand DeFi project other than Folk Finance. Um, going back to here, they say Lofty is a platform that provides the ability to fractionalize, own, fractionally own US rental properties through the Algorand blockchain. They operate very similar to Realty where properties are transferred from sellers to Lofty by placing each property under an independent LLC um, and membership share of the LLCs are tokenized. The returns from the whole, from holding these tokens come from rental income and property uh, appreciation. It is unlikely that we are, that there would be an option to redeem um, as the reference asset is a legal claim to the return generated by the token, not the property itself. So we actually covered yesterday, Hedera are working with DLL Piper that own or, or are partners with Toco that utilize Hedera to do a similar thing with quarterly homes where you actually own the equity in the house and it's fractionalized. This is coming, guys. Um, and, and on this channel, we are miles ahead of our competitors in terms of the research that we've put in the tools that we provide to people and the realness of these updates. I don't care whether you guys buy Algorand or not. It's irrelevant to me. I only care from an investment point of view about my own holdings.
and the cryptocurrencies that we've researched and have in our portfolio. And you can find out what my portfolio is by uh, becoming a patron. I post all my receipts and, um, you know, give, give regular updates on the portfolio uh, as it goes. Not for people to copy, but just a reference point. So Lofty, of course, is a tokenized property thing. They've been mentioned by NBC, uh, Business Insider, Forbes, the Business Journal, and the NASDAQ. And it is very interesting. I've got a friend who is mad on this, uh, and I'm sure he owns loads of these tokens in the forms of NFTs and has got loads of things going on. Algorand does need to work on its development. You need to see a huge boost in um, TVL because it's it, it's crap performance, unfortunately. Um, we like Algorand, but we're going to call BS when we see it, right? We're going to say, look, it's done a very poor job in terms of attracting on, on both the Algorand metric and um, the actual USD metric. You know, if you compare this with... Um, Cardano, everyone, I can hear the booze from here, but we like Cardano. We think it's a blockchain that's been built for the people. You know, you can see this has had a way better year. And in terms of ADA, these guys are going on and, 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 and you know, it's, it's a bull market going on there in terms of TVL. So they need to do a lot. Um, from the price point of view, I think Algorand's going to be a real winner. Um, I just think it's going to take time. And I think, again, going back to what I mentioned at the start of the video, you have associated entities. We won't name any, and we can track the wallets for this to, to prove it dumping Algorand regularly onto the market to fund things. There's nothing wrong with that. All projects do it. All blockchains do it. Algorand perhaps a little bit more aggressively. Um, and the problem with that is you've got a very low interest in it. We, me included as a community member, need to boost Algorand awareness out and really, you know, not necessarily promote it, but get, get the word out on it. Um, ultimately for the benefit of, uh, uh, of the blockchain, its ecosystem, its health, uh, and then the price will follow the, the fundamentals. So there's a lot of fundamental things that need to happen. Um, it's been a painful hold, uh, but it, it will turn around, I do believe, eventually, and uh, hopefully we're well positioned for when that happens. Again, Algorand typically bottoms out a lot later than uh, the rest of the market. Um, so on that note, I'm going to love and leave me, leave you, leave me, leave you. Let me know what you thought about the Fed paper. Um, do go and check out allencrypto.com for the review of the tokenized Asian report from the Fed. Um, and on that note, we're going to love and leave you. I doubt very much anyone else is going to be covering this. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next.